All right. So I'm going to work through this example real quick. Um, and it's conceptual in nature. It's oversimplified, but I think it does, it, it paints a picture. The point I want to hammer home here is that oftentimes our thinking devolves into this either or thinking, right? So it's like, do I sell or do I hold? And, and I should sell because we're at the peak of the market. And then I'm going to have all that cash and that'll be uh, security. And there's truth to that. Uh, but there's also an offsetting, uh, you know, this is the same cost benefit analysis. And this is just one example. So I'll share it with you and see what you guys have to say. Um, let's take, for example, a facility with an NOI of 70K, right? Let's say today we can sell that at a seven cap. Again, I'm just making up numbers. Maybe it's a six cap, maybe it's seven, but we can sell it at what we pretend to know is the peak of the market. That means we're gonna get a million dollars in our pocket. What are we gonna give up though? We're gonna give up the cash flow. So depending on our debt situation, we might be giving up 30, 40, 50, or even $70,000 a year in cash flow, depending on how we have this thing leveraged. The kicker, though, is that that million dollars in our pocket, and those of you that understand how inflation works, this will sound simple and you'll wonder why I'm saying it. Those of you that aren't really clear on it, hopefully this sheds some light on it. That million dollars, if you have a million dollars in your pocket today, assuming inflation continues at its current rate, you're only going to have $850,000 worth of buying power a year from today. That's assuming what most of the industry would, uh, most of the industry outside of the government itself is a pretty reasonable uh, assessment of inflation. I know the government right now says it's like 8.7, but those numbers are cooked. You can do some research onto it without going too far down a rabbit hole. You'll discover that it's usually about double that. So 15% is a conservative rate of inflation right now. Look at gas, it's up, look at our mortgage rates, they're up double in six months, right? Um, and, and the government picks and chooses which products go into the inflation index and conveniently for them, they, they leave some out that, that uh, uh, are probably more appropriately included. That said, there's both a cost to selling today. I get the security of having money in the bank of maybe having sold at a peak of a market. But if you're not going to redeploy that money you have to understand that there is an inherent devaluation of that money that's likely to occur for the next you know, year plus, several years potentially. Um, now that's true even in good times. Your money's always worth 3% less next year than it is now. That's just the time value of money. But when it's 15%, it becomes a more prominent part of our decision-making process. But um, when it gets higher than what you can make. Yes. Absolutely. Good right. point. I feel confident I could make 10 or 12% of my money just, you know, lending it out to people or whatever. But when you're 15, even you do all that, you still live. Yep. And, and that's a very good point. And so if we carry this further, let's say the other side of the equation, and this isn't meant to be an either or proposition because there's all sorts of other opportunities available to us. But in this instance, let's pretend you hold the property. And let's pretend that, as Philip mentioned earlier, over the next 12 months, you lose that, that one cap rate, right? So your value is, instead of being a seven cap worth a million bucks, uh, it's going to be an eight cap, which is only worth 875K next year. You just lost 125K relative to the million you could sell for today. But remember, if we compare apples to apples, a year has passed. And our cash above decreased to 850K in value. Our property, assuming this made up 1% delta in cap rate change, is worth 875, right? But you still have a cash flowing asset. So you're making that 30, 40, 50, or 70 grand a year in cash flow, which pays the bills. Some would argue that's fortification. And if we then layer on inflation, we should be able to increase rents to some extent. 3%, 5%, 15% to keep up with current inflation. I don't know what the number is. I just made up a 10% to, to uh, round out the illustration. If you assume a 10% increase in rents, the value at the end of that year, still using the, the less favorable eight cap is 960K. 
right? So, so you see how this is like some in our favor and some against, and neither one is catastrophic unless we make the wrong decision and everything else goes in the opposite direction. But that's not how it works because the inflation, the interest rates, the cap rates all have interplay between them such that the odds of them all going the exact opposite direction of where you want them to isn't going, isn't a real possibility. I don't know if that made sense. Hopefully it did. Uh, the take home message here is when I'm looking at sell, hold considerations, it's always a cost benefit analysis. Um, yes, I want to take chips off the table. And especially now, like several people have said, I'd love to get um, the more cash I have in hand, the better I feel until I have so much that that 15% degradation in value starts to make me not sleep at night, right? So you wanna keep as much cash on hand to, to fortify your personal expense, your financial situation, and either have enough cash or be liquid enough to access the capital to pull the trigger when we get toward the bottom side of this correction.